Hey guys, welcome back to Chaos Core Tech. My name's Garrett, and today's video is going to be a little bit different than my normal videos. So in this video, I'm going to talk about kind of an interesting subject, um, and one that affects pretty much everybody who uses a 3D printer. And this subject has the potential to be slightly controversial, so I'm going to start out with a disclaimer saying that anything I say in this video is purely my opinion, um, and I'm not telling you guys to do anything. Uh, mostly the purpose of this video is to just start a dialogue and open up a conversation to see where you got, what you guys feel about this. Also, this video is in collaboration with Joe over at his 3D printing YouTube channel. So he has created another part to this. Um, he talks a lot about the same subject, but we hit slightly different points. Uh, make sure you check out his video here. He's a lot more knowledgeable about this type of stuff than I am, so be sure to check that out. Link's also in the description. So the overall topic of these videos um, revolves around STL files being free for download on the internet. And uh, this is actually something I hadn't thought about at all until Joe um, had brought it to my attention by commenting on one of my videos. So really what I'm going to be talking about today is, um, from a designer perspective, giving away your models and your STL, STL files for free versus um, using a paid option. Well, I'm going to start out with some good things about STL files being free, some bad things, and then um, I'm going to talk a little bit about possible solutions or um, a little bit more of my opinion on the subject. So uh, let's talk about the good things about STL files being free. Um, and if anyone's confused by that, uh, basically what I mean is like when you go to Thingiverse and you go to download um, a design that someone has created, uh, it's free. And most websites are the same way in the 3D printing community. So there's quite a bit that can be said about what's good about that. Uh, first, it's free, and who does not love free things? Um, and the second is that there is an extremely low barrier of entry for someone just looking into looking into 3D printing as a hobby. Because if they're thinking about buying their first 3D printer and they first stumble on um, sites like Thingiverse or Pinshape, uh, you imagine anything like that, then um, seeing that the files are free and there's so many files out there is a huge plus because you're already spending a significant amount of money getting the machine and then to find out that um, you know just you're a spool of filament away from printing all of these things so that's really amazing and that's one of the things that I really liked when I first started 3d printing and so getting new people interested in the subject of 3d printing is a huge plus and then another really positive thing is um, some of the creations that people have derived from other people's creations. So like you see this on Thingiverse um, quite often. Someone uploads a file for free and it's a pretty good design, but someone else sees that and says, hey, I think I can make that a little bit better or different. And so they download it, modify it, upload it again, and of course they give credit to the original person who created it is just a derivation of it. And sometimes that can lead to really amazing designs, so I think that's a really good thing. And now let's hit a couple points of what can be bad about it. And this is what I personally had not thought about until Joe brought it to my attention. So uh, this little section right here is not my opinion, it is just uh, sort of what I see as a fact about the community in general. Um, I will talk about my opinion on this uh, after this little section here. So there is sort of a persistent attitude in this community that um, things should be free. And now I'm not saying that's right or that's wrong. I'm just saying that that, that seems to be the thing. There, um, there are some paid sites like Pinshape and things like that that you can offer up your models for a price. And um, typically, from my experience, um, people either avoid that or um, even look down upon people charging for their designs. And that has a couple of negative impacts that could potentially be damaging to the future of 3D printing. Everyone deserves to be paid for their work, um, and there's a lot of designers out there that are creating amazing things. And that sort of leads to the next point that um, there's a lot of professional 3D modelers that uh, would not be interested in 3D printing and all of that because um, there's the attitude that everything should be free. So they're looking at it like, why would they come over and just release all their files for free when they're not seeing anything in return for it? And there are some really amazing people who create 3D models out there um, because 3D modeling has been around and been used by a lot of people in a lot of industries before 3D printing really hit the market. Obviously the video game industry is huge and there's a ton of artists there creating really nice 3D models. There's also uh, people creating models for effects in movies and stuff like that. And you could take a lot of those models and they wouldn't need much tinkering to make them 3D printable. And actually, I can show you this. If you go to YouTube right now and type in speed 3D modeling, there are a ton of great videos that come up um, 
of people just creating models for one reason or another and they are ridiculously high quality. And like I said, a lot of those could be 3D printable, but those are professional designers. They've spent their life building that um, skill and they won't just give those away for free. And there are also professional CAD designers that um, create mechanical things all the time for uh, bigger companies that use like CNC machines and some industrial sized 3D printers. And they could create amazing mechanical things that would um, actually really help in a lot of our lives, but they're not gonna waste their time either because the perception is that they can't make a living doing this. So um, all those points being said, uh, the big question is what should we do about this? Um, and this is actually something that I am personally very conflicted on. So this is where my opinion comes in. And once again, um, make sure you watch Joe's video because we don't necessarily share every single um, opinion that the other has. I think he's much more uh, firm in where he stands on this, whereas I pretty much have no idea. I've thought about this for probably close to a month now, and I'm still pretty conflicted about this. I'm not um, really sure what I think about it. Because if you watch my channel, a large part of what I do here is create models. And so far, every model that I've created, I have given away for free. And I don't really see that as a problem, um, largely because I get my value through my YouTube channel. So I like having a community, having um, people that enjoy what I do. I like helping others and um, I can justify the time that I put into these models through what I get back on my YouTube channel. Not, not even just monetarily, but just all the support that I get. But not everybody who is a professional 3D uh, designer would want to go this route and create a social following where they could potentially make some money without just upright charging for the models. So all that being said, um, one possible solution that I see is uh, just sort of a change in the way we think um, and opening up to the idea of a paid 3D model. And now I'm not saying that everything needs to be paid. I'm gonna compare this to the software industry because my day job, um, I am a programmer. So it's something that I've been a part of for many years and I've been able to, to um, kind of see develop a little bit more. So when you're looking for a piece of software, whether that be like video editing or even the slicers for um, 3D printing. So simplifying it, there's sort of two categories that programs fall into. You've got the free and open source software that um, you know you can download is usually created by a community somewhere, not just one single person. Um, and it, it usually doesn't cost anything. And then you've got the paid programs that are like, um, you know, the Adobe cloud programs or um, Simplify 3D, stuff like that. Now, there's some free and open source programs that are very well constructed and work amazingly. And there's others that um, work to a certain degree but are maybe a little buggy or rough around the edges, but don't really have um, the features and the power of some of the bigger software suites that large companies develop and that you have to pay to download and use. And I think that situation can also be applied to um, 3D designs and STL files. So the large portion of 3D models would probably still be free and they would be seen as, you know, quick little models or um, stuff that isn't fully developed. So if you've got an idea that you're tinkering with, maybe the first few iterations of something, free. And until you've got something that you've tested and printed yourself and is a really useful design that you think that um, you would be proud selling to a customer or something like that, um, you know, just basically refined you know, this this is the end all be all for this model, then that's when you would create a paid model, something that would make the paid status worth it. And I think that could be a nice balance. So that way the majority is still free, but there's less of a perception that if you charge for your models, um, you know, you should feel ashamed or you're evil just trying to make money off of this. And there is a little bit of this going on. Um, but there are some problems that I've seen out there. One problem is the price of some of these models. I've seen um, a single model that was just a little figure of some kind. Granted, it was a very nice figure, very detailed, but it was being sold for upwards of $200 just to download the file and print it. Um, and I think that's uh, pretty crazy. So once again, I'm gonna use an analogy, um, the music industry. Think about uh, creating a track for some of these big artists you know, it takes a team of people to create the track. A singer comes in, sings, does everything they want to do. Um, and I'd imagine it's a very expensive and lengthy process just to create one song. But when they release it, you can download it for 99 cents. 
And that's because they know that a lot of people will buy it. So they'll make their money back through a ton of people buying it instead of just charging, you know, whatever they spent on the project for one track because no one's going to buy that. So I, I think prices need to be reasonable and they need to be kept um, relatively low. Like most designs would probably be in the one to two dollar range. And then obviously you can evolve from there, but um, that'd be a great place to start. Okay, so let's talk about um, some of the file sharing websites that host 3D files like this. Um, the big one that comes to mind is Thingiverse. Obviously Thingiverse um, is all free files and they don't offer a paid option, which is great, it's worked for them. But if you're wondering where to find some um, paid models or maybe offer paid models, um, there are a couple websites you can check out. And I will put the links for all of these down in the description so you can go check them out for yourself. So you've got websites like uh, Pinshape, Shapetizer, 3D Share, and Colts 3D. Also 3D Up and Down. Now some of those even have an option for um, file streaming, which I've never really used that option, so I don't know a ton about it, but um, from what I gather, it, it does not seem to be um, like a good solution. So I'm not gonna really comment on that. Um, I'll just say that I've avoided that option in the past. And there are also other options um, for trying to generate some revenue with your designs. Um, one website that I found uh, seems to really care about their designers is My Mini Factory. Um, you can upload your designs there and uh, they do have like tipping options. So if someone really likes your designs, they can tip you there. Um, I believe they even have live streaming options there so you can stream your modeling process and stuff like that. Um, similar to what like Twitch or YouTube streaming would be. And they hold contests all the time and they even started up a revenue sharing option that you can activate if your designs are exclusive to My Memory Factory, they will share um, some of their ad revenue with you, which I think is really nice. So I do wanna reiterate at this point that um, I'm just trying to open up a discussion and as I've said, I've con I'm conflicted on this one. Um, I don't have a strong opinion one way or another because obviously all my designs are free and most of them are probably gonna be free moving forward. You know, I don't have any plans to start offering paid, um, paid models. But like I said, I get my value um, through another source. So my recommendation to you, um, first of all, leave a comment on my video and Joe's video as well. Um, just let us know your thoughts on this, what, what you think, um, if you think that everything should be free all the time and that's just the way it should be, let us know. I would love to hear that. And if you think that everything should be paid, let me know that too. Um, I love to hear you know, different sides of this. If you're somewhere smack in the middle like I am, let me know that too. I mean, you kind of get a feel for where the community is at, but um, you know, it, it's always good to, to sort of collect data and um, just really put out feelers and just see where people are at. All right, guys, well, I think I will leave it at that. Um, I hope this came across the right way. I really wasn't trying to be preachy or anything like that. Um, I just thought it was an interesting subject that kind of shed some light from an interesting perspective that I hadn't seen before. So um, once again, I'd love to hear your opinions, especially if you are a designer that shares things on these sites. Um, I'd really like to hear what you think. And then once again, don't forget to go check out Joe's video. I'll put a little link up here in the corner and down in the description. So um, check him out and subscribe to him if you're not already because he does a lot of great 3D printing videos. He talks about um, some pretty interesting topics like copyright. Seems like an incredibly smart dude. So definitely subscribe to him if you're not already. And then that's all for me guys. I'll see you next time.